This will be the last of our lectures on the blocking uh, designs. You recall when we first started out, we talked about the completely randomized designs. Uh, here's a situation in which we were not worried about blocking variables. We, we merely ran our K treatments randomly and uh, recorded the data. And uh, you can see the very simple mathematical model which is involved here. The next class of designs we took up were the randomized blocks. Here we were worried about a blocking variable. Now a blocking variable isn't a studied one, but we bring it into the experimental design because we recognize the variable as a source of variability which we would like to eliminate so that our estimate of the variance is really made as small as possible. Blocking variables are things like batches of raw material or days of the week or different personnel operating equipment and so on. Sometimes there are more than one blocking variable. And when we run into experimental designs with more than one blocking variable, of course, the size of the experimental design becomes quite large. However, happily, there are circumstances in which the size of the experimental design can be reduced. And that's always of interest to engineers who are anxious to get as much information as possible, as economically as possible, as economically in the number of runs, uh, to be sure. And so this brought us to a class of designs called the Latin squares. In the Latin squares, there are two blocking variables to be considered along with the treatment variable. And we see here the mathematical model for the Latin square where rho sub i and gamma sub j are the two blocking variables, such as days of the week and individuals operating equipment, and tau sub k, of course, are the treatment effects. Well, we see over here uh, two uh, sets of Latin squares. Here's a two four by four Latin squares, and uh, following uh, immediately underneath here are two five by five Latin squares. Well, now, Latin squares come in all sizes. 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 Well, that doesn't work. Blooming electronic gadgets, no, no good at all. I guess we ought to get back to the standard way of, of um, running these lectures. Um, let's see, we were talking about uh, Latin square designs, weren't we? That's right. And let me show you something more about the uh, Latin square designs while we're about it, shall we? Uh, you'll recall there are these 4 by 4s and 5 by 5 Latin squares. Why do we show you two of them? Well, these are sort of generators of families of Latin squares. Did you know that if you change the rows around, if you made that row, put that row down here and brought that row up there, move the rows around, and then you move the columns around in some arbitrary way, you could not, from this design, manufacture this one. Isn't that extraordinary? These are sort of parent Latin square designs, and you should choose uh, the parent design randomly, and then you should randomly assign the two blocking variables randomly. For example, this would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And this would be individuals one, two, three, four, and five. You'd randomly assign the individuals to the columns and the days uh, to the rows, and then you would assign the treatments randomly to the letters. And by this fashion, you bring in randomization into the selection of your Latin square design. Of course, you must be wary of a Latin square and recall that the blocking variables may not interact with one another or with the treatment variables. And you must also be very careful about the number of degrees of freedom that you have for estimating the error variance when you run the analysis of variance associated with a Latin square, because there's never very many degrees of freedom when you're dealing with a very small Latin square design. Well now, suppose there were three blocking variables. Golly, Pete, that makes a very large experimental design under ordinary circumstances. But we can oftentimes, if we're fortunate, uh, reduce the number of trials uh, considerably by evoking what's called a Graco Latin square. Now, the Graco Latin square is a experimental design very much like the Latin square design, except that it has room for three blocking variables. Here's the mathematical model associated with the Graco Latin square. We have the mean, and then we have the three blocking variables. There's the row variables, the column variables, and the, we'll call them blocking variables, beta variables, and then superimposed on these three classifications are some treatment variables. So there are three blocking variables and one sort of studied variable, the treatment variables. Let's have a look at a uh, Graco Latin square. Here we see a three by three Graco Latin square, and I want you to note that every Roman letter appears once in every row and every column, and once with every Greek letter. See that? And so similarly, every Greek letter appears once in every row.